European Union needs to mobilize a lot of investments towards long-term climate mitigation and the environment. That is absolutely clear. There's not a silver bullet how to do that. If there was, it would be wonderful, but there isn't. So one has to look carefully, where do we need to make adjustments so there's financial flows go to these areas. And I would say maybe three areas are particularly important. First, we need to look at the processes along the investment chain. So we look very much at the concept of fiduciary duty, investor duty, to integrate ESG issues and to bring more financial capabilities on the long term. The second is a specific issue with infrastructure. There has been a lot of talk about infrastructure, but there's still a big need infrastructure in many, many countries of the European Union. Our feeling is there is a lack of development capacity. So the European Union needs to help member states to develop technical and legally and economically the infrastructure necessary for solar, for biomass, for wind energy and so on. And this is a lot of new technology and this is how the European Union could help. There's enough money out there. It's really about the technical development assistance. And the third area I would say is to look at bits and pieces of the regulation and see how we can get banks, for example, more engaged on long-term lending. For the moment, we are very much focused on short-term business, short-term stabilization, but we will not solve the climate and the green issues in the short term. This is a long-term prospect, so we have to adjust regulation to facilitate the long-term investment and long-term lending in particular. The task force established by the Financial Stability Board, which has been chaired by Michael Bloomberg, and I've had the privilege to be one of the vice chairs, has been a milestone. Because for the first time, corporations come, came together at global level from all the G20 countries and thought together how to standardize the reporting on climate-related risks and opportunities. So the first importance was to find a common language because everybody in all countries was reporting about this thing in a very, very different way. So what we needed to find is a global language. And this is what we have been proposed, focusing on four simple questions we are asking the companies. One, how are you organized on this, on governance and climate-related risks? Two, how does it impact your strategy? Three, how do you manage the risks related to this? And four, have you given yourself specific metrics and quantitative targets? These four simple questions we have proposed, broken down to eight sectors, given sector-specific guidance, and with this, I believe we have been able to establish a common language. And today, I see a lot of interest in taking up these recommendations, both in the United States and in Europe and in Asia and in other continents. So, it is a very significant step forward. It's a wonderful question to think what motivates us. And I must tell you, for me, it links the professional and the human being. It links what we think on the weekends with what we do during weekdays. On the weekends, we enjoy nature. We have the families with our, with our children. We think about the long term. We think about education and job creation. And we think about the climate and so on. And what the green finance does, it links this with our day job. And this is what makes it so rewarding and so, I would almost say, beautiful to be able to work on this because we can work and engage really as human beings with our convictions and with our values.